Stop One. Military life and religion in the ranks. Statue of Constantine, York Minster. The Roman army arrived in York around AD 71. It established the fortress of Eberarchum, built to be the home of two legions, the 9th Legion Hispania and later the 6th Legion Victrix. This base provided the focus for the civilian town that grew here. You are now standing in the heart of the fortress, over the site of the Principia or Headquarters building, which lies partially underneath the minster. The soldiers who built and lived in the fortress here came from all across the empire. Many came from Italy, others from Spain, France and Germany, places where the legions had been based prior to coming to Britain. We can see evidence of this from tombstone inscriptions, some of which are on display in the Yorkshire Museum. In the later Roman period, troops began to be recruited locally, and we can imagine men who grew up in and around York following their fathers into the legion. However, troops continued to arrive from around the empire, and North African troops came to Britain with Emperor Septimius Severus in the early 3rd century. Archaeologists have found pottery and special stoves used to cook African-style dishes. Soldiers ate food and used objects that had originated from all over the empire, a possible reminder of home for newly arrived troops stationed in this distant province. Evidence from York suggests that soldiers had a mixed diet, with cereals and meat aplenty, especially beef and pork, and also a wide range of fruit and vegetables, both local and imported, together with Mediterranean olive oil and wine. Daily life was not only about soldiering, however. I'll now introduce you to one of the occupants of the fortress, Legionary Titus. Salve to you, friend. Legionary Titus, 4th century, 2nd cohort of the 6th Legion Victorious, at your service. I'm not going to lie to you. It's pretty routine here in Ibarakum. Hope you're ready for days filled with parades, fighting practice, guard duty and the never-ending cleaning of weapons and armour. But don't worry, you can break up the monotony by learning a trade. Most of us do. We have blacksmiths, carpenters, builders, potters, bakers, brewers and clerks among the garrison. And anything we don't provide ourselves we can get from the civilians outside. Anyway, I'd better head off to report to my centurion or I'll get the short straw and be stuck on guard duty again. The traditional view of York's fortress is that only men lived here, but senior officers were allowed to legally marry whilst on active service, and regular soldiers often had girlfriends and families in the town. There is evidence for these women living alongside the soldiers, because lost female jewellery has been found in the sewer of the army bathhouse, now under the Roman bath pub. The diverse nature of the Roman army meant that the troops had a wide variety of religious practices. Throughout the whole empire, the official religion of the Roman army was the imperial cult. A building called the Basilica, adjacent to the Principia, was used for compulsory religious ceremonies pertaining to the worship of past emperors. It was here that addresses were made to the troops, and statues of Jupiter, Minerva and Juno were displayed in a small room along with the legion's standards. You can see a column from the basilica across the road from the minster entrance. The basilica would have stood to the height of the nave of the current minster. Apart from the official military religion, Soldiers were allowed to indulge in whatever religious practices they chose. In the 3rd century, the popular cult of Mithras was brought to Ibarakum. This exclusively male cult gave followers access to about 400 secret temples across the empire, where ceremonial feasts took place. 
it was particularly popular with military officers, and a Mithraic temple was built in the Micklegate area of York, from which an altar stone was recovered in the 18th century. Roman soldiers were very pious and had the means to make many personal offerings to both Roman and local gods. This usually involved the sacrifice of an animal or the dedication of an altar at which they would worship privately. Several of these have been found from York, including ones to Mars and Hercules, who presided over war and combat, and Victoria and Fortuna, the goddesses of victory and luck. Soldiers also worshipped deities from their homeland and countries in which they had served, as well as the local spirits or genii. One such offering to the god Sylvanus was uncovered. I'm so excited about the hunt tomorrow. I've got a chance to get away from my clerical duties, organising supplies for the garrison, and get out into the wilderness to hunt deer and boar in the forest outside Ibarakum. I've had a portable altar made to give me great fortune in the chase, so in the morning I will make an offering to the forest god, Sylvanus. The Emperor Constantine was hailed as leader of the Roman Empire at York in AD 306. You can see a statue of him outside the Minster entrance. Constantine later made a degree for the tolerance of Christianity, which had probably already spread to Britain by the 4th century but archaeological evidence suggests that Christianity had made little impact upon the material history of Ibarakum, and there are only two artefacts which suggest the presence of Christianity in York. However, as the centre of the military fortress in York, it is no surprise that this area became the site for later Christian churches. By the late 4th century, the decline in Roman government eroded York's influence, reducing it from the capital of northern Britain to a small town. The military had been reorganised and the troops of the remaining garrison were barely distinguishable from people living outside the fortress as the walls slowly crumbled around them. <laughs> 